Hello, hello. Oh, there we go. I was wondering why my game was not taking a moment there to load up. Hi, Nyan. Sorry, I'm alone. I was spinning a little bit behind here. I just need to get a cup of coffee because, uh, oh, this is going to be a long one, isn't it, tonight? <laughs> <sighs> It'll be worth it. <laughs> Ugh, God. Look forward to getting this. I kind of look forward to getting this chapter done, but also I don't because I. It means that permanently one kid, one of my favorite characters. Is gone forever. Well, okay, gone for the main store. Technically, I can see them again when I get to the uh, the extra part where um, where I wind up. When I unlock this question mark thing, that's where I'll get to see them again. And I won't ever have to see another dead body. And, and we can see Sayaka again, along with Leon. So that'll be fun when I get to do that. Um, so tonight, obviously, I'm going to be doing some Danganronpa. I'm going to be doing a uh, chapter two trial. Uh, depending on how long that takes, depends on whether or not we'll get into chapter three tonight. We most likely will. I mean, I'm hoping I will. Um, sorry, I'm also very warm sitting. Ow, shit, what? I just dropped something. Oh, um, give me just one more moment. I'm gonna go grab some water to throw into my, uh, into this little, little contraption that's got a fan built into it to keep me cool because it is fairly warm here still. Uh, I'll be back in just a moment.
So sorry about that. Um, I just need to help my husband out for just a moment. Uh, try and get our daughter settled. It's been another long day. Another long day of where she hasn't actually decided to sleep at all today. So I'm hoping that she'll eventually crash. Mm. Oh. Ah. <laughs> I'm trying to burn the inside of my mouth now. By, uh... By, uh, <laughs> drinking hot coffee. Because I made myself a cup of coffee in order to get through this tonight. Um... But I'm feeling actually pretty darn good tonight, at least. I mean, the arm where I got the shotgun is a little sore, sore, and right in the area around it is a little stiff with the muscle, but I'm pretty sure that'll eventually, it'll loosen up as long as I keep working, as long as I keep moving that arm and also uh, massage the muscle and that. I should be fine. Uh, but yeah. So I'm going to swap to this scene. So that way then. Uh, did not mean to hit that far. Uh, okay. So we're going to continue. From where I last left off. I mean that this isn't a pre-trial prep. Uh, looks like I've got. Yeah, I've got Robot Jock. Oh, I guess I don't have Algorithm in there. Uh, I'll put Algorithm in. And I've got Melodious Voice. So. Let's review the evidence. So, I've got uh, Monokuma file number two. I've got Sakura's account, Locker Room Dumbbell. Mondo's account, the card reader, the main hall ebooks, a broken ebook, uh, the genocide Jack Kate's file, Aoi's uh, account, boys' locker room carpet, two locker room posters, Chihiro's e handbook, status of the dead body, the disappearing stain, library desk lamp, and Celeste's account. Um. I'm sorry, I'm wondering why this sounds kind of loud in my ear. Okay, so. I think that I've got everything good. I'm ready to go in. One more sip of coffee and let's get into the trial. Oh, it's also be interesting. Basic explanation of the class trial. So your votes will determine the results. If you can figure out who done it, then only they will receive punishment. But if you pick the wrong one, yes, we already know Monokuma. Everybody is dead I I except for the murderer. I'll punish everyone besides the blackened, and the one that deceived everyone else will graduate. Mm-hmm. Okay, then. So, first off, let's talk about the murder weapon. Well, we already know what the murder weapon is. It's Dumbbell. First, we have to make clear what was used to deliver the fatal blow. Oh, this would be fun. I'm very glad I've got a new mouse, too. Okay, I want the... Uh, oh shit, uh, excuse me, how do I change, uh, left shift, and shift, oh, my mouse wheel is what, uh, No! Well, okay, I'm trying to think here. Uh, 
Okay, I think I know exactly where I need to... Must have been in the locker room. Yeah. So... I think it's... I think I need to... Uh... No, it was a dumbbell. I understand. Can we agree that the object that dealt the fatal blow was the dumbbell found at the scene of the crime? It was covered in blood, and there was nothing else at the scene that could have caused that kind of injury. And the wound on the victim's head is consistent with the shape of the dumbbell. As far as I'm concerned, there's no mistake and no room for doubt on this one. I love Kyoko. I love how she is so pretty. She looked at her head wound. Yes! That's so creepy. Oh my lord. If you don't mind, I will proceed from here. Let's move on to discussion of the culprit. Although, I believe the criminal behind this heinous act is already quite clear. Yokia, no. No. Don't you dare start with that goddamn Genocide Jack bullshit. It is not Genocide Jack. For real? The hero's killer is the fiendish serial killer, Genocide Jack. Genocide Jack, the fiendish serial killer. Did he really kill Chihiro? Oh, oh no, a new element has been added to the non-stop debate, so... Yes, for this debate, lines of white noise will appear to disrupt your re reactions. Your truth bullets will disappear if they hit these lines and think of them as obstacles in your debate. Oh, right, there's gonna be white noise, meaning that I've gotta fucking watch where I'm shooting. There's a way to keep this white noise from getting in your way. Press the right mouse button to attach the silencer, which you, you can use to shoot down the white noise. However, you shoot an actual remark with your silencer instead of the white noise, the time limit will decrease. Take careful aim when you have your silencer out. Oh, but if your action difficulty is set to gentle, white noise won't appear at all, in which case you can forget about the silencer and just focus on the situation in front of you. Well then, good luck and have fun. Yeah, no, my difficulty is set to me, meaning that I'm going to see lots of white noise. Okay, let's... I have a feeling that it's the Genocide Jack case file this time. The culprit is Genocide Jack. I'm sure. Case closed. As far as I'm concerned. Seriously. That's impossible! Why? Okay. What makes it impossible? Well, I mean... Come on! There's just no proof for it! Hey, so... Speaking of Genocide Jack... Okay. The evidence that shows Genocide Jack is related to the case, it has to be The culprit is Genocide Jack. I'm sure of it. Case closed, as far as I'm concerned. But that's impossible. Uh, what makes it impossible? Well, I mean, come on. There's just no proof for it. Hey, so Ah, uh, the proof. I think the proof would be the case file, but I think it, that's it. Uh, has to be. The culprit is genocide Jack. I'm hoping I'm right because I could be wrong. As far as I'm concerned. Okay. I'm really hoping I'm right. I think I'm right. No, 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 no. Okay, there we go. I think that's the right one. Yes, it is, because otherwise it would have given me some fans. Might know one reason he could be involved. Okay, yes. While I was looking around the archive in the library, I guess it's some kind of confidential file the police put together about the genocide Jack case. What? That's kind of weird as shit, isn't it? What was something like that doing in the library? The why of it is probably more trouble than it's worth. So let's forget about that for now. More importantly, 
It outlines all the specifics of every genocide Jack case in exceeding detail. According to the file, there appear to be two defining characteristics in every Genocide Jack case. The first is that a bloody message is found written at the scene of every murder. Ah, that's right. Boob lust. <laughs> Fool me, no, not boob lust. Uh, no. It's actually blood lust. But more important is the other characteristic. And it's something that has never been made public. Never made public? What the hell is it? Why don't you tell them, Makoto? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Nyan, for those emotes. <laughs> the other characteristic of every, uh, how the victim was positioned. Apparently, in every genocide Jack case, the killer suspends the body in a certain way. Other than the killer, the only people who know about this are the higher-ups in the police department. However, Chihiro is most definitely suspended in the same way. So, how did the culprit mm. know about it? Only high-level police officials were aware of it. Yakuya, you are a fucking dirty, dirty fucking tramp. I know you are. Because the culprit in this case is the real genocide Jack. No fucking way. No, it isn't. Genocide Jack is one of us. Yes, in fact, it's Toko. Yeah, yeah, oh, I get it. I know exactly who. It is. I know exactly that this is genocide Jack. thing is is that in the original japanese version uh genocide jack's actual name is genocide Sho, i think or genocide oh fuck what is what it's a very gender neutral name uh genocide jack and uh, let me Yeah, genocide show. Genocide the show is what her is what um, is what genocide Jack's uh, Japanese name is, and genocide show winds up being gender neutral. So meaning that it could be either female or male, which wound up playing really well. Unfortunately, when they translated to English, they didn't come up with a good name. They just came up with genocide Jack. And then, well, you'll see here in a moment. Like, yes, Byakuya is sticking to his story, but oh god. It's not. It does seem like a riddle in a way, but I feel like I can just about see it. Genocide Jack is Toko, but isn't Toko. What does it mean? Easy! It's the, it's the split personality. Um, uh, oh. Fuck. Um. Uh, what? I am absolutely un uh, understanding what I'm supposed to be finding here. What? I have no idea. I've just lost it. I failed this fucking one. I... Ah! Uh, Nobody believes me. Nobody wants to hear what I have. We come to the end of the day. Uh, yeah. I failed this. Uh, give me a moment. It would appear the one. Makoto is not the black end. Looks like the real killer gets to graduate. Yeah. On the, other, on the other hand, everyone else must not be punished. Is this really the end for all of us? 
Is it all over? What do you say? Want to give it another shot? Yes. Can't give up now. Oh, fuck. What is this fucking one? Uh, I might just need to fucking cheat here. Uh, I don't remember what this Hangman's Gambit is. The Hangman's Gambit trial number two. Oh, okay. I think I figured. It, okay, now I know what it is. Uh, even though this is the wrong fucking word, this is really the really, really, really wrong word. I had to look it up because I just was not about to get it. Uh. Okay. Where is? Come on, give me a Z. Now, oh, this is absolutely the wrong fucking word. I know it is. Come on, give me a fucking O. It's not schizo. It's not even... Ugh. See, schizo is short for, like, schizophrenia, from what I understand, and that is absolutely not even close to anything to do with a split personality. Split personality now is more commonly called dissociative identity disorder, and oh god, this game winds up being so bad for mental health things. I like, I love this game. I love the artwork. I love the characters. I do not love the way that it... I hate how it represents this particular disorder. Because it is just in absolutely the worst way possible. Please take this game with a grain of salt. A huge grain of salt when it comes to this particular disorder. I think I read that somewhere in the file too. I hate that. Associative identity disorder. Oh, okay, but still, you wouldn't say that about Nishikawa is perfectly acceptable. Toko's strange behavior after seeing the body is proof enough that she has a split personality. <laughs> One thing that shows Toko could have a split personality has to do with her behavior. Her behavior changed after she fainted. when she saw Chihiro's corpse, and then, when she woke up... No stutter! I'm fine, I'm fine, yeah. Whoa, is that a dead body? Hey, are you dead? <laughs> you must have hit her hit up real hard when she painted. Well, there's a front and a back, a top inning and a bottom, a sea of truth and a web of lies. <laughs> This is quite concerning. I mean, she sounds completely different. Yes, yes. That's for sure. That melancholy tone of hers completely disappeared. Kimiko assigning adjectives to my tone without permission. Not to mention, mm -hmm. once she regained consciousness and saw Chihiro's body again, she was utterly calm. In other words, within her is one personality that can't handle blood, and one that obviously can't. <laughs> So when Toko trapped herself in her room, it's because she was scared of Genocide Jack? I won't let Genocide Jack have control. I'll to drive out to kill her, to drive out the murderous fiend. The reason she locked herself in her room wasn't to keep other people from getting in. It was to keep her other personality from getting out. What? Toko was afraid. Afraid of the murderous fiend inside of her. Of killing even more people. How? Yeah. How can you know all 
I'll get it. I do believe you misunderstood her. What she's trying to say isn't, how can you know all this? No, what she wants to know is, how could you tell them? Huh? Last night, just before Monokuma gave his motive speech, Toko and I had a strange conversation. She told me a most interesting story. She said a murderous fiend lived within her, and she was afraid it could appear and attack at any time. And that trepidation is what's caused her to have such a bleak attitude. Isn't that right, Toko? <laughs> this is all a lie. Right, Toko? You just said you wouldn't tell anyone. What? You promised? I can't believe you lied! You have only yourself to blame. You came to me with your tragic little story. I didn't ask you to. Yakuya, you're an asshole. This is the real world, not some romantic fantasy fairy tale. <laughs> Besides, you broke your promise first. You said that as long as you were here, no matter what, you wouldn't let Genocide Jack kill anyone. But in spite of that promise... I'm sorry I couldn't keep her promise. Don't worry, never again. I, I won't let Genocide Jack have control ever again. Yeah, yeah. do I have to tell you? I never said that, but you weren't able to do it. You just couldn't resist that rush you got from killing, could you? I, I tried. I swear I tried to control it. <laughs> but your efforts were useless. What a disappointment. I hate you. Well, the opening act is nearly finished. All that's left is to hear from the person in question directly. This person? You don't mean... Toko's body suddenly lunged backwards. A huge thud and echoed across the courtroom, but in the next second... <sighs> See, they call her Genocide Jill, and I just, I wish that they would have found a different name, like they would have found a more gender neutral name to use, because in the Japanese version, both before and after it's revealed that it's Toko, uh, Genocide, Genocide Doshou is the name for the character, both before the reveal and after the reveal. In this one, they go with Genocide Jack and Genocide Jill, which... Yeah, it kind of works, but I still thought, think that they should have found a gender-neutral name that would have worked better, I think. But, man, that's my, that's my two cents on it. What the heck? So you figured it out, huh? Well, whatever. What are you gonna do? I'm the ultimate murderous fiend, Genocide Jack! Or better yet, let's go with Genocide Jill! What the fuck is this? Toko, what happened to you? Not Toko. That's a loser name. And what happened is a textbook split personality. But what if one of them happens to be a serial killer? You should turn a blind eye to one's faults. I kind of like this side of her. Like, it's just something that actually is kind of fun. But, oh god, this is absolutely, like, the worst way to represent this fucking disorder. I hate it. from the one we've come to know. Yes, well, the world is composed of a front and a back, you know. Just like how every inning has a top and a bottom, or how in the depths of every truth lives a little lie. Behind every dark and gloomy soul lives another that shines as bright as the sun! <laughs> this is the murderous fiend genocide, Jack. This is... This is... This is beyond insane. Miss Jack, uh, Jill, can I ask you a question? Uh, th thank you for the follow. <laughs> thank you for the f 
follow uh, hit, uh, NC101 Let's Plays. Uh, let Plays, okay. Hello. It's not true. I'm yeah, I just started the chapter two trial here not that long ago, so I'm not too terribly far in. Oh yeah, this game is a roller coaster. This one This is the only issue I have with the game is that it winds up representing this mental illness really, really poorly. That is the only thing I hate about this game. Um you've beaten it. Yeah, I I can see that. Like a lot of people have beaten this game. Uh, I haven't beaten it per se myself. I've watched other people finish it, but I haven't finished it myself yet. Of course, it's not true. How dare you try to link me to that creepazoid? Oh God. The police and government and society in the outside world are totally. You've done the first and second. Yeah, uh, I'm planning to do this one, then Ultra Despair Girls, then the second one, and then finally do V3. I have not touched, I have not even seen anything to do with V3 other than the promo material. Second is the best out of the three. I mean, Danganronpa 2 Goodbye Despair has my favorite character Chiaki in it. I love Chiaki. Anyways, uh, let's continue with the trial because I know how long this trial can take. Yes, Chucky, best girl. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, no one can argue with that too much. Okay. This murderous fiend is responsible for Chihiro's death. There's clearly a motive, so there should be no doubt. A motive? Remember what Monokuma told us? If someone didn't murder and graduate within 24 hours, an embarrassing memory or secret mm. would be revealed. Technically, it can't be Toko Hill. <laughs> Let's assume that Toko's secret was about genocide death. If a secret like that came Some out, murder weapon would be broken. <laughs> yeah. So she yeah, it is heavy, yeah. To never have that side of herself exposed. Interesting. Very, very, very interesting. But sorry, as much as I hate to admit it, I'm not the culprit. Huh? But I cannot imagine anyone other than you could murder someone in such a bizarre fashion. Maybe so, maybe so, but nevertheless, it's the truth. Do you really expect any of us to believe you? <sighs> I could never believe a word you say, you monster. Maybe, maybe she's totally right about that, but, but something's still bothering me. He said, I need to get some more details about all of this. Easy, scissors. Scissors. I don't want to say it's probably the status of the dead body. Sorry, but I didn't kill anyone. You say that, but do you really expect any of us to believe it? Perhaps if we had an alibi, that would change things. Oh, an alibi, huh? Now we're talking. When you compare your past murders to this incident, the modus operandi matches completely. What more proof do we need? I give it up. You killed her. Think that it's wrong. It's genocide to feel like something doesn't match up. Uh but I didn't kill anyone. You say that, but do you really expect any of us to believe it? It's status of dead body. No, it doesn't. It doesn't match up. Are the methods of murder really exactly the same? 
I'm not so sure about that. I think there's a slight difference between the Genocide Jack cases and this one. Huh? How is it any different? Uh-oh, you don't know? Well then, human garbage, let me tell you! I murder with passion and conviction. I consider myself a professional, and I have a very particular way of doing things. Yeah, serial killers always have a very... It, it, it's hard, it, it is really, really difficult to say this, but uh, serial killers actually do have a very particular way that they actually choose out who their victim is, um, and then the murder method. Like, they have very particular ways that they do it. Like, it is... Um, I'm sorry to do this, like, in the middle of the trial. Um, you guys are going to be hearing music. I'm going to mute my microphone real quick here. Because my daughter is really streaming her head off. So I'm going to go and see if I can get her soothed to get her to go to sleep, hopefully. Um, I will be right back. I promise I really hate delaying parts of the trial. But, uh, I'll leave the music playing in the background. I promise not to click and, like, have more of the gameplay while while I'm not on that screen.
I am so sorry that took so long. Ah. She was just very, very fussy. I, I finally have gotten her to go to sleep now, so we're going to continue on with the game. More sense. There are two clear differences between the Genocide Jack cases and this one. Victim's fatal injury. For one, the cause of death is different. In the Genocide Jack murders, all the victims were killed the same way. According to the case file, they were all apparently killed with a pair of scissors. But Jihiro died from a blow to the head, right? Ah, yes. That is remarkably different from the other murders. Wouldn't it be strange for someone who kills the same way without fail to suddenly change their method? And thank you, Nyan. <laughs> and there's more. One more conflicting detail. That's right. In my recipe of murder, if the bloody message is the tortellini, then the arrangement of the body would be the pesto sauce. Oh my lord. Can you please stop comparing killing people to cooking? <laughs> Are you saying the other difference has to do with how the body was arranged? That's right. The second difference is related to what was used to suspend her. Do you remember what the killer used to suspend her? They used some kind of rope to hang her up by her wrists. What is your point? Well, in all the previous Genocide Jack cases, something else was used to suspend them. Specifically, pairs of razor-sharp scissors. And guess what? I used my own specially designed scissors for the murders and the arrangement! Like I said, I'm a professional! So naturally, I'm very picky about the tools I use. And, 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 and you know what else? Big Mac said there's two differences, but he's wrong. There's three. Are you referring to me? Oh, oh, right, 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 right. Um, so this will wind up tying into something that is in chapter five. Um. I'll tell you now this that her nickname for Makoto will tie into chapter five a little bit more because I know exactly why she calls him that. They're all male. And it'll be plain as that why I couldn't have possibly killed that little lolly girl. Hmm, let's see. There was a pattern surrounding the genocide jack victims and Jihiro didn't fit it. I think I figured it out. I know why she couldn't have killed it because Jihiro was a girl. Is it because Jihiro was a girl? In all the genocide genocides, all the victims had something in common. <laughs> and Harada, the hero Honda, Suchigaku, Kano Ise, Takashi Yoshida, yeah, yeah, yada yada, there's no end to it. Since Chihiro was a girl and not an adorable little man, you wouldn't kill her? 
Would an Italian chef suddenly start making ramen just because they're both noodles? Don't be stupid. I have too much passion and conviction to cross that line. That's the absolute reality of the one and only. We get it. You've clearly explained your hobby and your philosophy. But that's not all there is to it. It's a different matter entirely when you're forced to kill in order to survive. <laughs> oh, I love Genocide Jill because I, even though I hate how they uh, represented this uh, disorder, I love the fact that she calls Pyokia a lowly cur. make some amount of sense yeah like, like even if it was genocide jack and just to kill for survival oh my god rookie <laughs> thank you for the raid and the love there rookie rookie i would say that if, if anybody that is uh came over with rookie uh, if you guys are uh, not wanting to be spoiled on Danganronpa 1, I am currently on Chapter 2. Uh, dealing with... Um... Yeah, welcome Raiders. Welcome, welcome. Hi, Oni. Welcome in. <laughs> Thank you for the love. Thank you for the raid here. Uh... <laughs> Thank you for shouting out Rookie for me. Yes, uh, Rookie was just uh, earlier tonight. She was doing some Final Fantasy fourteen rating with her uh, with her FC mates for the most part. I think most of them are your FC mates, along with they're basically your friends. I mean, all of them are your friends. I think. And uh, then she swapped over to some art tonight. Oh, your raid static. Okay, so. Okay, so she was raiding with her raid static tonight, and then she was doing uh, some artwork for her FC Mates as Mondays. Okay, uh, for her PNG, she was working. You were working on your reference sheet, right? Or at least a reference for your PNG. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, I caught part of that before I had to dip to start my stream. Um, so far, I'm an hour into the trial. I have screwed up on the goddamn Hangman's Gambit for the first time. Because it was a goddamn fucking stupid one. They used Schizo when it, realistically it was Dissociative Identity Disorder. Which they absolutely represent horribly in this goddamn game. That is the only gripe I have with this game, is that Dissociative Identity Disorder is horribly misrepresented in this game with uh, Toko and Genocide Jill, which are two sides of the same person. So Toko is the ultimate novelist, I think is what her ultimate is. And Genocide Jill is the ultimate serial killer. You'll probably be lurking those since you're going to be getting ready for bed. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the raid and the love. And uh, I hope you enjoy your lurk. Uh. Yeah. Okay, whatever. There still aren't any in the school. Are you sure about that? <laughs> yeah, this is where it gets uh very interesting. Yeah, she's very, uh, out there. Yeah, 
no idea what's going on anymore. Could such a heinous villain really be innocent? But the body really was suspended, right? And nobody but the police knew about that. Hmm. It had to be the real deal and not some copycat killer or whatever. Nope. Actually, hold on. There is one person. One person who could have copied the Genocide Jack cases. Yes. Uh, where is he? Where is he here? Here's my answer. Yakuya, it's possible you could have found out, isn't it? You'd have no problem gaining access to classified government documents or internal police records. Plus... You already looked through the Genocide Jack file before this all happened, hadn't you? Oh, Byakuya is staying silent now. Are you saying Mr. Togami did it? Then the reason pushed the theory of Genocide Jack being the killer so hard was because he wanted to pin the crime on her. He rearranged the scene to disguise it and make it look like I put my stamp on it. The adorable glasses man was behind it all. Oh, I'm on fire! Well, Biakia, what's your response? I see. So now the suspicion falls on me. Then I must ask, when would you say I began acting suspicious? Surely you must have an answer. Hmm. Looking back and thinking about it now... The way you were acting right before we discovered the body was a little strange. And the locker rooms. They're suspicious. Very suspicious indeed. Wouldn't you agree? Not suspicious. Seems nobody's searched the locker rooms. Let's start with the girls' locker room. Yeah. You wanted to go to the girls' locker room right away, right? But since you're a guy... I should have naturally thought of the boys' locker room first. Is that what you want to say? The is Chihiro, a girl. Hence why I said we should check the girls' locker room. Nothing strange about that, I say. On the contrary, there's something very strange. Okay, then. What's so strange about it? Go ahead. Share with the rest of the class. There was a clear contradiction in what Piaki I just said. Need to make it clear to everyone. Oh my lord, another element? Okay. Next, we're gonna add something called a truth flashback. If you aim at a weak spot and hold down the left mouse button, then you'll memorize that weak spot. This memorized phrase can only be shot once as a single truth bullet. If you shoot or change the truth bullet, it will disappear from your truth cylinder. However, you can use this flashback feature as many times as you want. If you don't seem to have the answer to a lie or contradiction in your loaded bullets, it might be wise to memorize a different weak spot and use that to make your case. What's the best time to flashback? Well, you'll just have to use your keen wits, won't you? In this case, though, I will say that if you don't use a flashback, you won't be refuting anything. Well, then good luck and have fun. Yay! Oh, fuck me. This'll be fun. Very fun. Yeah, you, you're only going to give me one bullet, so that way I can only fuck it. So, you said Biakia was acting kind of weird before we found the body. But he was acting weird... how? If you're presented with the opportunity to check out the girls' locker room, you absolutely take it! That's a natural reaction for any guy! The victim was Chihiro, who was a girl. So, of course, I would suggest we check the girls' locker room first. There was no oh. I know exactly which one I need to grab. I know exactly which one I need to grab. Oh, 
So of course I would suggest we check the girls' locker room first. There was no time for pointless distractions. What's so strange about that? I think... I think that's the right truth bullet. I'm hoping I'm right. Oh no! Oh, that was scared me like that. Makes me think. So. Oh no, I was wrong. It, it's actually before we found the body. It needs to be this. Before we found the body. Yeah, no, I. Uh, I'll tell you what's so strange about that. Because up until we actually discovered the body, we couldn't have known who the victim was. So your claim that you went to the girls' locker room first because Chihiro was the victim doesn't hold up. I see. That's a good answer. I must admit. Interesting. Very interesting indeed. But your reasoning is still too weak. How so? What's wrong? Is that it? Surely you've got more than that. Go ahead. Show us. What's with Byakuya's attitude? Like, he doesn't even care. Got him cornered, but he's acting like it has nothing to do with it. You're not finished already, are you? There must be oh, my lord. Oh my lord. Think about it. We just talked about the differences between this case and past genocide jack incidents. The proof you're looking for is hidden in there. Oh? Proof that I'm the culprit, you mean? Difference between this case and the other genocide jack murders. The evidence that proves Biopia is responsible is hidden in there. What could it be? Oh shit. This will be fun. Great desk. Yeah, Celeste's account, the disappearing stain. What? The difference between the cases? You want me to explain it again? When I want to kill, I use my very own special scissors. And I use those same scissors to arrange the body. But Chihiro was suspended with... It was some kind of rope. Was it not? That's right! It absolutely was! Then there must be something very fishy indeed about that rope. Hey, Byakuya, where'd you get it from, huh? I'd never seen that rope before in my life. Bullshit, you have. It is the extension cord. Ah. Actually, I'm pretty sure you have seen it before. Because, you see, that rope, or should I say... That extension cord? What? <laughs> extension cord? Yakuya, you've used the extension cord in the library more than once, haven't you? And the same extension cord that was in the library... <laughs> ...went missing after the murder. And there's no way someone who uses that extension cord as much as you do wouldn't discover that fact. And Byakuya must be the one who took the extension cord. I can't imagine any other possibility. Oh, you're gonna be quiet. You think? Then your conclusion is something like this. I killed Chihiro in the girls' locker room, then hung her up and wrote that bloody message. I intentionally made it look like Genocide Jack was behind it. Is that about right? I don't know if you're- you aren't the one that actually murdered Chihiro, but you are definitely the one that fucking hung her body up. Fucking dick. Ugh. As if he's not even involved. Wait, not even involved. I asked you if you think that's what happened. Hell yes, that's what happened. So that's it, right? Byaki is the killer. I don't disagree with not disagreeing. He kept calling this a game, right? So he'd be totally willing to do something like this to win. Um, 
sorry, but could we hold on just a second? I... I think we need to talk about this a little more. Huh? Do we really need to? We've already decided who did it. I know, but still... There's something that's still bothering me. Is that right? And what, pray tell, is still bothering you? I killed her in the girls' locker room, then disguised my crime. Ooh, no, 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 Chihiro wasn't killed in the girls' locker room to begin with. ...to make it look like it was the work of a homicidal psychopath. What about all that bothers you? Wait, what was that just now? Something's not right. Yakuya's remarks just now, there's something in there that... The scene of the crime. The scene of the crime is not right. Chihiro in the girls' locker room. Died in the boys. Damn it, Piakia. Yeah, it's like, um, did anybody else notice the poster? How disappointing. What kind of question is that? Even in the world of disappointments, this is a true letdown. She was found dead in the girls' locker room. There is absolutely no question about that. How could the scene of the crime have been anywhere else? Well, I think it's entirely possible that she was killed somewhere else, then carried there. <laughs> yeah, it was replaced. Along yet, with the rest of the murder scene. The rest of the murder scene. Oh, Byakuya doesn't know. Byakuya is not that brilliant. He wasn't paying attention. Hey, Bianca, did you just, did you, did I just take you off guard? When the story suddenly moved to the crime scene, Bianca, who'd been so confident up till now, maybe Bianca never even realized that the actual scene of the crime could have been somewhere else. Don't just move on without permission. What do you mean she was killed somewhere else? <laughs> Byakuya wants the killer to graduate, or does he just want to die with everyone? Byakuya is just fucking dick. Come on, like, if there's any he is wanting to play up the game. Else, let's see the proof. Evidence that shows the murder took place somewhere else. Just, I need to just focus on those things that got switched. Uh. Two locker room posters. I got it. The proof that she was killed somewhere else is the poster that's hanging in each locker room. Your proof is some posters? The poster in the girls' locker room was a picture of a big boob supermodel. But don't you think that's kind of strange? Why would the girls' locker room have a poster like that? I bet those massive jugs of hers were totally fake! <laughs> Meanwhile, the boys' locker room had a poster of the super popular boy band Tornado. Again, that doesn't really seem to belong in a boys' locker room. So you're saying that maybe the posters were switched? And there's one other thing I noticed about the locker room. You know what I'm talking about, right, Sakura? You're referring to my protein coffee, aren't you? Protein coffee? While I was in the girls' locker room earlier, I spilled some protein coffee on the carpet. But I noticed that after the murder, the stain had been totally scrubbed away. No, it's not that the stain was scrubbed away. It was moved. Uh, it was moved to the boys' locker room. The stain on the girls' locker room carpet wasn't scrubbed away. In fact, I found it on the boys' locker room carpet. That's definitely the stain from my protein coffee. Then, does that mean that the carpets were switched too? But why would anyone do that? To move the murder scene from one locker room to the other. It's certainly plausible, don't you think? What? In other words, in order to completely swap the scene of the crime, the bloodstained poster and carpet were moved along with the dead body. By doing this, the killer was able to change the entire room where the murder took place. 
I can certainly follow your reasoning, but why would the culprit bother doing that? Huh? Why would they go to all that trouble of switching the scene of the crime? Actually, an even bigger question. If the murder did take place in the boy's locker room, then how did Chihiro get in the boy's locker room in the first place? In the first place. Mm. Ah. To get into the locker room, you have to swipe your e-handbook across the card reader device. But Chihiro's handbook should have only allowed her access to the girl's locker room. She had no way to get into the boy's locker room to begin with. Nope. And I can tell you what it was. I highly doubt that. Shut up! I'm telling you, I know how she could have done it. Is he right? Could Chihiro really have gotten into the boys' locker room somehow? Yes, because of the fact that mm, secrets. Killer really did some effort moving those carpets. Yeah. Um. I shit. Mm. Theoretically, if Chihiro would be able to use Leon's handbook, she could have get into the boys' locker room, but that's if she was able to use it. Yeah, I'm gonna get to it. Yeah. No, I don't think Chihiro used Leon's handbook. Why not? Because Leon's handbook was broken. Oh. Well, then, yeah, I guess that'd be pretty impossible, huh? I am struck silent by how quickly you gave up. Plus, isn't there a regulation against using someone else's handbook? No! Actually, the rule states that loaning your handbook is prohibited. It says nothing about borrowing one. In other words, you could borrow a dead person's handbook all you want, and you'd be safe. Hey, yup, yup, yup! Hit the nail square on the noggin! Of course, if it were broken, that wouldn't make any sense anyway. So then, she must have hacked her, like I said. She used her ultimate programmer skills and... You can't fix an e-handbook. The instant you open one up, a security buzzer starts glaring. So, if she didn't use Leon's handbook, and she didn't modify her own handbook... Maybe Mr. Naegi's initial assumption is just... wrong? No. It seems like there's no way she could have got into the boys' locker room. So I guess so. Okay then! I vote for Byakuya! No, is that it then? Chihiro was killed in the girls' locker room and Byakuya is the one who did it? Really? So, I don't know what else I can do. Hold on a second. I agree with you though. I think you're on the right track. What the f- You finally decide to open your mouth oh. what you've got to say? Mondo. She could get in the boys' locker room, right? So, why are you so sure she couldn't get in? There's still one other way she could have gained access. What? What are you talking about? What other way is there? Well, to explain that, why don't we take a little break from the trial? I'd like you all to come see something. Wait, 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 wait. Just what do you think you're doing? Don't worry. This will make the whole trial more exciting. I'm sure that thought must please you. Huh? It'll make things more exciting? Well, alright then. Ah, shit, I just skipped over something. Sorry about that. What is it you want to show us? It will not be boring or I'll be very unhappy. Oh, I have no 
doubt it'll meet your lofty expectations. So, shall we go? Recess! So before I even knew what was happening, the class trial had been put on hold. We headed off with Kyoko in the lead, and where she took us was... I'd like you to examine the victim's body one more time. I want to check it again. Be sure to examine the entire body very carefully. Take your time. Kyoko, this is the oh. God, this is like using our hands. No way, no way, no way, no way, no way. It's probably best if I don't run my hands all over a girl's dead body. It's not that I'm freaked out or anything, it's just <laughs> based on religious grounds, you know? Very well. I'll do it. <laughs> but you're a girl. You shouldn't have to touch a dead body. Just let one of the boys do it. No, it's okay. I think Chihiro would rather have a girl examine her. So just leave this to me. <laughs> Sakura. Uh... Oh. Oh. Jill. That's not it at all. Stop screwing around. Okay. Here I go. I'm sorry, Chihiro. Please excuse the intrusion. And uh, putting her hands together in a brief prayer, Sakura then began to quietly examine her body. Be sure to check her entire body, and I believe we will solve this particular mystery. Her entire body? I know you say that, but... What? This is... What is this... What is it? Not possible. <laughs> it's not possible. Sakura's eyes were staring wildly at Chihiro's lifeless form. Her mouth of frame trouble. Confirming this fact. What? You're joking, right? I wouldn't joke about this. <laughs> then is this really true? Was a guy? Uh yeah, Chihiro was a very, very short um guy that actually got picked on a lot as a child and very much leaned into more with how how tiny they were and how weak they were they wound up leaning more into that quote unquote weak side by dressing as a female and leaning more into the feminine side but but uh so that's what Kyoko wanted to show everyone, huh? Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Uh <laughs> yes, I s I does make the hero. Oh God! I still oh, feel bad for Chihiro. For keeping you waiting. Now then, let's resume the class trial. Oh. Turned to the shocking revelation that Chihiro was actually a boy. Let's pick up from there. Yes. Well, I don't know his reason for hiding it, but the fact is, Chihiro was not a girl, but a boy. I think Chihiro was actually a guy. Thought it never crossed my mind. Because the victim was male, he would have had no problem gaining access to the boys' locker room. 
assuming his handbook did, in fact, list his gender as male, then yes, that would be true. Of course his handbook said he was a boy. He dressed like a girl, but he was a boy through and through. So then, there should be no issue with Makoto's initial assertion. The victim was killed in the boy's locker room, and was then later moved to the girl's locker room. And the killer could have easily used Sayaka or Junko's handbook to get into the girl's locker room. So Shihiro really was killed in the boy's locker room? I still yeah. don't understand the motive for moving the body, but yes, that does seem plausible. To try and keep Chihiro's secret. Well, I must admit, I did find it rather odd. I knew he felt a little off. There was a certain incongruity to his female body. This is a most titillating situation! Good gel. So now everything has been connected. All the mysteries have finally become clear. Okay, well, connected, clear, whatever. We still think you're the killer, remember? <laughs> very interesting. This has become very interesting indeed. Ah, you thought me in your own little world. What about you, Makoto? After everything we've learned, do you still think Byakuya's the killer? Nope. Well, without a doubt, Byakuya is the one that made Chihiro's death look like Genocide Jack did it. But... But I... <laughs> he might not actually be the killer after all. What? But aren't you the one who accused him in the first place? He just seems to be too... easygoing about all this. Like he's enjoying us solving the mystery. The way he's acting, it makes it seem like it doesn't have anything to do with him. And you think that might be because it doesn't have anything to do with him? Plus, the evidence he left behind was a little too... How can I put it? Overt. He consciously chose to use the extension cord, knowing it could connect him to the murder. At least, that's how I see it. And beyond mm. that, when you found out the murder took place in the boys' locker room, it seemed to rattle you. And then again, when you found out Chihiro was actually a guy, if you really were the killer, that stuff wouldn't have had any effect on you. So that's mm -hmm. what I'm thinking, huh? Well, it bothers me that you don't have more concrete reasons, but... Oh my lord, Pyrgria, will you stop throwing this fucking case? Will you stop throwing this trial? I guess I'll mark it as correct for the time being. Mark it as correct? He's right. I am not the culprit. I just happened to come across the corpse in the girls' locker room and decided to alter it. Yorkia, you are an absolute terrible piece of human garbage. Like, oh, God. This is one reason why I don't like Yorkia, because the fact that he comes across as not only a smug, snarky asshole, but he decides to tamper with a goddamn crime scene. Like, you are a goddamn asshole, and I hate you. Are you fucking with us right now? No, I am not effing with you right now. I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> oh, you decide to censor yourself there, Piaquia. Huh. I find it very hard to believe. Go ahead, find it. <sighs> I really, Byakuya is one of those characters that he's okay, but I, I would not have a problem if he were killed off. If you're really telling the truth, then why? Why do you do that to his body? My reasons hardly matter right now. Mm -hmm. say for sure without talking about it a little more we're seriously gonna keep going we're all good aren't we i thought it was clear byakuya did it no i'm with mm. Makoto. if there's any doubt whatsoever we need to explore every possibility because if we're wrong we all die here that's true very well then i'm with you too damn straight count me in do you not have a mind of your own of course i do 
What am I, an ant or something? Anyway, let's discuss this all as a group one more time. We still have time to make our decision. That's very true. Our lives are all on the line. Excellent. Then shall we resume our game of hide and seek? Oh my god. Oh. But if Byakuya didn't do it, then who's the real killer? Who murdered Chihiro? There's one thing we can be sure that we know about the killer. The killer is a guy. Since the crime scene was the boy's locker room, we need a boy's handbook to get in. Since Leon's handbook is apparently broken, the killer would have had to use their own. In other words, it had to have been a guy. Hmm. That's the other thing that they have wrong. I know that they have that wrong. That's still not enough. I need to find some more clues. I think it's actually Celeste's account. That might lead us to who did it. Well, clues are one thing, but nobody get a look at the killer? I'm sure if someone saw the killer, they would have said something by now. Perhaps someone saw the victim at some point. Even that might be enough for now. Yeah. All we need right now is any kind of new info. It's over. It's all over. You know who saw the victim? The killer. And only the killer. No. Ah, shit. In. Game over, man. Game over. I, I, I didn't click fast enough. No, not game over. Uh, but is that really actually true? No, 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 no. I know exactly what line I need to click on. No. Uh. I'm sure if someone saw the killer, they would have said something by now. Perhaps someone saw the victim at some point. Even that might be enough for now. Yeah. All we need right now is any kind of new info. It's over. It's all over. You want to know who saw the victim? The killer. And only the killer. No. Celeste saw Chihiro before the killer did. Someone else did see the victim before he was murdered. What do you think, Celeste? Now that you mention it, yes, I did see him. Oh, but I suppose only Makoto knows about this. The rest of you had no idea, did you? That is why you're all making such ugly noises. Oh god, Celeste, you are another one that I absolutely would like to deck. It was last night, right before night time. I saw Chihiro in the dormitory warehouse. I saw him stuffing a track jacket into a duffel bag. And then, I assume, he headed off to exercise. A track jacket and a duffel bag? But we didn't find anything like that at the murder scene. It seems likely that the culprit destroyed them to get rid of any evidence. And that is when he said something that struck me as rather odd. Well, I better get going. I'm kind of in a hurry. Chihiro told me he was in a hurry. But why would he be in a hurry? Only if someone were waiting for him, I should think. So, Mr. Fujisaki was on his way to meet with someone, and then they were going to work out together? But Hina and I had invited him to exercise with us plenty of times, and he always declined. Probably because he was afraid you'd find out the secret he was hiding, right? Which means that conversely, he must have trusted whoever he was meeting with very much. Enough so that he was willing to risk his secret being revealed. <laughs> A marvelous friendship! The point is, whoever he met up with is the culprit, right? So we just gotta figure out who it was. 
but knowing what we know, I can't even guess. No, you already have what you need to make the connection. Huh? Mm -hmm. You know who the killer is. Seriously? Who, who is it? Who's the killer? Think back to the track jacket and duffel bag the killer disposed of. Focus on the details of these items, and it should become obvious who was waiting for him. Are you sure about that? I won't. Yeah, Kyoko. Yeah. Part of it has to do with the fact that she's kind of supposed to be that character that prompts us into thinking about who it is. down some fingerprints or something even if we had the equipment for that we wouldn't know how to use it as was noted the evidence is already gone there's nothing to get fingerprints from maybe but we can make certain inferences if we just take the time to talk it out it's easy for you to say but fine celeste did you notice anything special about the bag or jacket the bag was just a normal duffel bag from the warehouse. All the bags in there are the same, so I can't imagine what would make that one special. Well, if I remember right, there was a decent variety of tracksuits to choose from. Do you think there might be some connection between the culprit and Shihiro's jacket? Perhaps. Let's explore that and talk a bit more about the jacket he took. Does Chihiro's check jacket really hold some clue about the killer? Somehow it's really hard to believe. This is where we'll find out that, you know, somebody is going to slip up. Somebody is going to slip up. Uh. Might be Celeste's account again. Yeah. So next we have to ask. Why did he choose the specific tracksuit that he did? What do you mean, the specific tracksuit? I got it! He picked that tracksuit because it matched the one the culprit was wearing! So, what you're saying is, the killer was wearing the same blue tracksuit as him? My tracksuit is black! Uh, ex I don't even have a tracksuit! Ah, uh, shit. You personally, I got it from the warehouse. If you must know, did any of that really help us get any closer to figuring out who the culprit is? No way, not a chance. Hey. You heard him, right? What he just said, <laughs> saying there's something off about what someone just said. First of all, we know, yeah. the specific tracksuit that he did what do you mean the specific tracksuit i got it he picked that tracksuit because it matched the one the culprit was wearing so what you're saying is the killer was wearing the same blue tracksuit as him my tracksuit is black <laughs> back magician Uh, I'm trying to figure out what I'm supposed to do for this because BRB uh, for a bit someone told you to do something okay that's all right yeah I'm just trying to figure out what I'm supposed to Try and figure out how I'm supposed to act. Oh, 
okay. Ah, there must be a contradiction there somewhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, I'm supposed to use Celeste's account. Yeah. Exercise, yeah. Mondo knows that about the tracksuit color. The only person that would have known what color tracksuit was Celeste. Hold on a second, Mondo. What did you just say? What I say? When Celeste testified a few minutes ago, she said. So I'm stuffing a track jacket into a duffel bag, and then I assume he headed off to exercise. She never said anything about the jacket's color. So why did you say Chihiro's blue tracksuit? What are you? You just. Hey, Celeste, what color was Chihiro's tracksuit? As a matter of fact, it was blue. And before we began the trial, did you tell anyone that? The only one I told about any of this was you. Then, Mondo, how did you know what color Chihiro's tracksuit was? Well, because I. I just. I'm sure he saw the clothes at some point in the investigation. No, that can't be it. The bag and clothes were surely disposed of by the time we began our investigation. Then the only reason he could have known what color the tracksuit was is if he saw Terry with it before he died. That's the only possibility. I love how Jill calls Chihiro Cherry. I just happened to see it last night. He walked past me, and he was carrying the tracksuit in his hands. No, that can't be it either. According to Celeste's testimony, she stuffed the jacket into her bag in a hurry. It was almost like she was trying to hide it. Then, just like that, she was gone. When Celeste noticed it, Chihiro made a point of making sure the jacket was completely in the bag. If you just ran into him briefly, you couldn't possibly have seen what color the tracksuit was. Yeah. It would appear you've dug your own grave. Yeah, what the fuck? She has her knives with her. Yeah, uh, yeah. Jill has her scissors with her. That's why you said what you did. Focus on the tracksuit, and it'll be obvious who he met with. What a bunch of nonsense. Ah, now I understand. It was all one big bluff, wasn't it? Your true intention was to draw a slip of the tongue from the culprit. That's why you said you knew who did it, to put them on edge. That's right. However, Mondo was my target all along. I had my suspicions about him from the very beginning. But why? No. What made you so suspicious? That's a good question. Wait, he talked? turning point that ticked me off. Maybe you didn't notice it, Mondo, but you tend to refer to men and women differently. You only call guys dudes. For girls, it's chicks. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. He's got a very, very particular kick. Like, like Kyoko said. He only refers to guys as dude and girls as chick. And after the murder, he referred to Chihiro as a dude. After he was killed, you happened to refer to him as dude. Once I picked up on that, it occurred to me that Mondo knew something we didn't. Did you notice such a tiny detail? Are you a witch? She's a witch! You're positively frightful! No. I'm not the frightful one. Not nearly as frightful as someone capable of murdering a friend. Yeah. Mondo, was it really you? Did you really kill Chihiro? I, 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 uh, I didn't kill anyone. 
You've been all over me, judging everything I say, putting words in my mouth. What gives you the right to treat me like a goddamn criminal? Yeah, he would never do something like that. This is a false accusation. Oh, Taka. Hi. Oh, Taka, come here, poor boy. Come here. You, you, you're going to be fine, poor boy. us with a problem. It seems we are all out of leaves. <laughs> my time has nearly come. That's what my little ghost friend is telling me. Oh yeah, that reminds me. Ifumi, weren't you telling me you found some evidence? Really? What kind of evidence? Actually, you know, now that I'm thinking about it here calmly, it might not be all that relevant. Jeez, does your confidence just get up and walk away? It's fine, man. Just tell us. If you really insist, then... Yeah. Um, here it is. Hmm? What do you have there? It happens to be an e-handbook. I found it laying on the ground, so I scooped it up. Found it on the ground, right? Then it must be along to it's Chihiro's. We know Chihiro's handbook was missing from the scene of the crime, right? For a fact. For a fact, indeed. I was totally sure I'd found it. Then it must hold some clue about the culprit, right? Well, that's what I was hoping. But it's busted. It won't even turn on. I imagine the culprit broke it to get rid of any evidence after the murder. That's odd. I didn't think the handbooks were quite so fragile. You're right. They're not. There is a specific weakness to the handbook. Totally waterproof and shock resistant. It would take an awful lot to break one. And yet, this one does appear to be broken. As is Leon's, it is useless in the main hall. But the one in the main hall is not Leon's. Remarkably high failure rate. <laughs> Do you think there might be some kind of mystery in there somewhere? How precisely did the handbooks get broken? Mm, there's only one possible explanation by hitting its weak point. You already told us before that the handbook has one weak point, didn't you? Yes. Sure. Maybe I let that slip, but I never told anyone what the weak point actually was. But if the handbook is supposed to never break, and two of them broke in quick succession, then... Then we can only assume that someone's figured out its weakness. You know what the weakness is, right, Monokuma? So, what is it? Huh? You're asking me? I think it's a necessary piece of information if you want this to be a fair trial. But if I tell you and someone else decides to come You're back? Oh, well, think welcome back. Good. Just tell us all that. <sighs> Why would we want to break our own handbook? <sighs> oh well, I have a weakness for pushy demands. But you're sure you won't follow their example? Oh my lord, Monokuma. The weak point of my cutting edge e handbook is when it's exposed to high temperatures for too long, it will suffer a meltdown and totally break. I flippin' knew it. You knew it? Yeah, because I found the handbook laying on the floor of the sauna. The temperature in the sauna can reach over 200 degrees. Strange how you don't get burnt, huh? It's hey, hey. as your sweat evaporates, it creates a cooling layer of air around your skin. If the hot air of the sauna were somehow pushed directly onto your skin, you definitely get fried. That layer of air would get blown away. That's why you may feel a burning when you move around. So when you're in a sauna, make sure to keep nice and still. Oh, interesting. I learned one new fact today. That is a mere trifling speck of knowledge. Anyway, 
If you found the victim's handbook in the sauna, then the killer must have been purposely trying to raise its temperature in order to break it. Meaning the culprit somehow knew its weakness. But how'd they find out? Monokuma said he didn't tell anyone, right? Indeed. Quite the mystery. What if they found out by accident? Yes, and that the handbook in the main hall is not Leon's broken handbook, but one of these. One person who's here. What if the killer took their own handbook into the sauna, not knowing its weakness, and it broke? They'd realize it was broken, of course, and it wouldn't be hard to figure out why. And once they had Chihiro's handbook, they knew they had an easy way to dispose of it. I won't say it's not possible, but who would have done something like that? I don't know of anyone who took their handbook into the sauna. I might know someone who did. Whoa! Seriously? I think the one who may have taken their handbook into the sauna was... Who might have brought their handbook into the sauna? Really? It could only have been one person. I know exactly who it is, because it's Mondo. Because he was wearing all of his clothes when he went into the sauna. Your handbook got broken in the sauna, didn't it? What? Why? Why do you keep accusing him? Mondo and Taka had an endurance contest in the sauna not too long ago, remember? And for the contest, Mondo just so happened to keep his school uniform on. But little did he realize, he'd also left his handbook in one of his uniform pockets. And when it was all over, Mondo discovered that taking your handbook into the sauna could easily destroy it. Uh, no, wait, hold on. You've got it all wrong. He would never kill. I don't accept this. Show me the proof. The actual solid proof. I feel bad for Taka. I mean, I don't want to believe it either, but but I found something that proves it beyond a shadow of a doubt. Uh. Uh. Let's test Makoto's assertion. If what he says is correct, then Mondo, you broke your own handbook. In other words, if Mondo's handbook is actually broken, then that proves that what Makoto said is right. Well, my goddamn handbook works just fine. See? Look! Makoto was wrong after all! Mondo wouldn't hurt a fly! Uh... If I, I don't want to believe Mondo might have actually killed someone, but I found something that proves it beyond a shadow of a doubt. Let's test Makoto's assertion. If what he says is correct, then Mondo, you broke your own handbook. In other words, if Mondo's handbook is actually broken, then that proves that what Makoto said is right. Well, my goddamn handbook works just fine. Makoto was wrong after all. Mondo wouldn't hurt a fly. Uh. I keep missing it. I I um Yeah, I know exactly which line it is, but I just Let's test Makoto's Uh one moment here. I'm needing to find out uh Thompson trade is the space key again. Okay. your own handbook. In other words, if Mondo's handbook is actually broken, then that proves 
that what Makoto said is right. Well, my goddamn handbook works just fine. Uh, yeah, I needed to slow that down just a touch. I, I knew exactly what ne line I needed to hit. It's just that I was... I kept missing it. Is it really yours? What the fuck is that supposed to mean? The broken handbook that was in the main hall. Isn't that one actually yours? What the heck are you talking about? What I mean is, I think Mondo swapped his handbook out for one that actually works. I think he took Leon's handbook and replaced it with his own. After all, Monokuma said himself that Leon's handbook never should have broken. That's right! The punishment it suffered wasn't nearly enough to destroy it. So then, the broken handbook in the main hall is actually Mondo's. Which would mean that the handbook Mondo has right now is actually Leon's, yes? But doesn't that violate the school regulation that says loaning out your handbook is prohibited? Oh my lord, Hina, do you not listen? Here's how I look at it. There is a rule about loaning your handbook to another student. But if they're dead, they're not a student. It's kind of a great area, I admit. But no worries. If anything, it just makes things more interesting. <sighs> As such, I decree that exchanging handbooks with a corpse is not a violation of the rules. Well, Mondo... If I'm wrong about this, you're welcome to say so. I'm happy to admit I made a mistake, but... Son of a bitch! What's wrong, doll? Come on, tell him he's wrong! You are wrong! You have to be wrong! Everything you just said is wrong! You made it all up! Okay, Fuck. then why don't we look back on this case one more time oh. from the beginning? Like, they wound up developing, like, a really good, like, bro bond, but the thing is, is that... Okay. Uh, I wish that this wasn't timed. Uh... It's not there. Um. Ooh. I should no, 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 that's right. Um. Shit, I'm... Sorry, I'm trying to think here. I am really bad at this one. Uh... Where is the girls? Wait, where did I put that one?
Okay, let me make sure that I'm actually getting this. I think that I've got this right. Uh, okay, pointing out the handbook. Da, 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 yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Putting that up, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I think I've got this right now. Yeah, uh, yeah, there's a timer on it. Last night, Celeste saw Chihiro in the warehouse, correct? At the time, she was apparently stuffing something into a duffel bag. That something was a blue tracksuit. You can confirm this, right, Celeste? With bag in hand, Chihiro headed out, even though it was officially nighttime. She made her way to the locker room, specifically the boys' locker room. But how could the victim, who is apparently a girl, access the boys' locker room? Simple, because she was really a he. Which is why he was able to use his own e-handbook to gain entrance to the boys' locker room. Once inside, he met with someone there. And the person he met was the one who killed him. It seems likely that the killer grabbed the nearby dumbbell, approached the unsuspecting Jakiro, and attacked him. And that's where the blood stains on the poster and carpeting in the boys' locker room came from. It was likely in the heat of the moment. The body was arranged, but the murder itself felt unplanned. Which is why the killer hurried to try and hide the act. First, pulling up the bloodstained carpet. Then, removing the bloody poster. Finally carrying the corpse into the girls' locker room. A girls' handbook was necessary to get into the locker room, of course. But this alone doesn't prove that the killer was necessarily a girl. After all, Sayaka and Junko's handbooks had been placed in the main hall. Using one of those, a boy could get into the girls' locker room without much problem. And that's exactly how the killer did it. With the carpet and the poster they brought with them, they got to work. Mm -hmm. They changed the layout of the boys' and girls' locker room in what you might call a crime scene switch. That could have been the end of things, but no. Yakuya discovered the body and decided to intervene in the situation making things even more complicated <sighs> so after stumbling on the crime scene he went and grabbed the extension cord from the library and then he got to work he used the cord to string up Chihiro's lifeless body the victim's own blood he left a grisly message there at the scene of the crime 
he wanted to create the illusion that genocide Jack was responsible for yeah. this loss. Oh, God. Biokia, I really want to fucking deck you. And around the same time that Biokia was putting together this facade, the killer, having already disposed of Chihiro's bag and other belongings, arrived at the sign. There, they planned to destroy the last piece of evidence. Chihiro's handbook. And just as the killer expected, the steamy sauna was enough to ruin the electronic gadget. Somehow, the killer knew that the handbook couldn't stand up to the heat of the sauna. This is the one that I actually needed a fucking guide to. I can't believe it, but I, I feel bad that I needed it, but I did. No. This can't be right. Where's your evidence? Yeah. Where's your evidence? You need evidence. You need proof. Without any proof, you can't pin any of this on him. Evidence that Mondo is the killer. That already revealed itself earlier in the trial. All I have to do is check that one item of his and everything will become clear. Um, fucking else. Ah, fever time and nega time. During a bullet time battle, if you press the space key, fever time will activate and the tempo will be forced to its max. At this point, you even if you push the buttons at random, you won't miss. So you can push right, mouse button, left mouse button, right, however you want to destroy the opponent's verbal assault. But this will... This only lasts until your focus gauge runs out, so make the best possible use of your time. Of course, it wouldn't be fair if only you got access to special time rate. So we've prepared something called Nega Time that your opponent can use. If the opponent activates Nega Time during the Bellet Time battle, your tempo marker will disappear, making it quite a bit tougher to hit the buttons in rhythm. If you were to activate Fever Time at this point, no, never mind, I'm sure nothing would happen, I don't know... What I was worried about. And surprisingly, if your action difficulty is set to gentle, the opponent won't use mega time. Then good luck, have fun. <laughs> oh shit. Yeah, I don't have unlimited favor time. That's the unfortunate thing. <sighs> Show me some evidence. You're wrong. I won't listen. I refute you. False. Show me some evidence. I won't listen. To vote. Show me some evidence. You're wrong. I won't listen. I refuse you. False. Show me some evidence. I won't listen. You're corrupt. I refuse to vote. I refuse you. False. You're corrupt. Show me some evidence. I won't listen. Show me some evidence. This should prove it. Yeah, fear time. Oh gods, this is the that was the worst. I hate it. Oh, nega time. That also f I can't believe that they have unlimited nega time though. That is bullshit. I'm sorry, that's bull. <laughs> but welcome in, Marty. Nice to see you. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I did it. I killed him. <sighs> you were too too good that they you had to use naked time. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um I'm gonna leave it on my ranking screen here for a moment. Um I need to get up, so I will be right back. Um, I'll leave the music playing. I'll leave the, the sound in the background on. But I need to get up. I'll be right back. I promise.
I see that you were trying to, to make sure that that was going to be up. Yes, there will be. Um, I mean, body per se. Anyways, I got 99 medals. I would get 100 if I got actually completely 100%, I think. I got no choice, man. After hearing all that, I gotta just. For the goddamn verdict. Roger that. Wait, hold on. No waiting. No off. Time for the moment we've all been waiting for. Grab your lever and give it a yank. I mean, I feel so sad that Jihiro's gone now, and Taka's just looking so broken. Like, Tacos just looks so broken from this. Uh oh, this time it looks like you got it right again. Yes, it is so. The black and the kill Chihiro Fujisaki was. In case you're wondering, the vote was not unanimous. You Taka chose the wrong answer. You're treading very close to, to the danger zone, Mr. Ishimaru. You need to be more careful. I, I refuse to believe it. There's no way. No way he would kill someone. Sorry. Sorry. What? Why are you apologizing? Why? 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 Why, why did you do it? Well, looks like Mondo's taken a vow of silence. Will allow me to explain on his behalf. What's Mondo's secret? Actually, the story of murder this time is the sad story of two men. Oh, but for anyone who doesn't really want to hear it, you can hit the control key to fast forward the text. <sighs> anyway, there was once a young boy. This is Mondo's secret. And it, oh no, this okay. Uh this must be the murder then. I know that Mondo's secret actually does come into play here. Um and his name was Chihiro Fujisaki. He had an extreme inferior inferiority complex regarding his own lack of strength. But, you're so weak, even though you're a boy. He'd heard things like that as long as he could remember, and he couldn't overcome his weakness. On the contrary, he tried to hide and bury himself further and further into that weakness. To take on the fragile form of a petite young girl. He had chosen that as his way out. Now nobody will be able to say anything about even though you're a boy. But no matter how tightly he wrapped himself up in that shell, the inferiority complex had already taken root deep inside of him. It was not so easily weeded out. As it turned out, the shell was completely empty. The complex didn't disappear. Instead, it only grew stronger and stronger. I'm weak. Once the killing game had begun here at the school, he had no choice but to accept this fact. After all, this world is survival of the fittest. If you're not strong, you don't survive. 
And then the lovely and hateful Monokuma announced the revealing of the embarrassing secret. <laughs> which of course included Chihiro's embarrassing secret, which I was more than willing to divulge. Even though he dresses like a girl, Chihiro is actually a boy. That was something Chihiro couldn't let anyone boy now, no matter the cost. If it, if that was revealed, it would be the end. The hardened shell would crack, the armor would fall away. Without a doubt, those around him would torture him more than ever before. Everyone figured being thrust into such a dilemma must have sent him spiraling into despair. And yet, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. S sorry. I don't really want to talk about it right now. But, but I also don't want to leave things the way they are. So maybe I can talk about it later. After I try my best to become strong, then I can tell everyone. Annoyingly, he used the threat of discovery to motivate himself to become stronger. Now's my chance. I want to change. I'm going to get stronger and accept who I am. Strong enough so that when someone says, even though you're a boy, I'll be okay. I'll get better. With that, with that thought at the front of his mind, he resolved to take immediate action. And so, that day he made the commitment to begin exercising, he was prepared to retrain his mind and body. But sadly, that would be the first and only chance he would get at it. Hey, um... When he decided to start exercising, he thought it would be good to ask for someone's help. But he wanted to tell that person his secret first, and then ask them to help him from there. And the person he went to, right. it was me. <laughs> yep, it sure was. The biker gang fella that had been painfully clear about how important his manly promises were. So Jihiro probably figured that even if he confided in Mondo, his honor would make him keep the secret. Plus, Mr. Macho Mondo was the very symbol of a strong man that Chihiro had always aspired to. Maybe talking to Mondo about it will help give me some courage. So he went and asked Mondo to help him become strong. I think that they brought up what, who was supposed to say that. That was his aspiration, and he thought that only Mondo's support would he ever be able to come close to that. So then that must be why Mondo did what he did. He promised he'd made to Chihiro. Huh? What he did? Did what he did? You mean that's why Mondo carried Chihiro from the boys' locker room into the girls' locker room? Indeed. Yes, that's exactly what I mean. Wasn't that to cover up what he'd done? That could have been a part of it, but I don't think it was the main reason. The real purpose was to keep the promise between men he'd made to Chihiro. But, but how does moving the body keep a secret? Because... because if everyone knew he'd been killed in the boys' locker room, then everyone would have been arguing about how she got into the boys' locker room, right? Once that started up, at least a few of us would have immediately begun to suspect his identity, so he tried to protect Chihiro's secret by putting him in the girls' locker room and stealing his handbook. See? Then Mondo did all that he that to keep the promise he'd made to Chihiro, who he'd also killed. Why would he do that? The more I hear you talk, the more I don't understand. I mean, you guys trusted each other, right? So why? Why did you? Because no matter what, I don't want anyone to know. 
So that's what triggered it, after all. The possibility of having your embarrassing memories and secrets exposed. What, what is this? That's impossible. Nothing could have been that bad. Something he didn't want anyone to know, even if it meant killing someone? It's impossible. Don't make me repeat myself. How many times must I repeat myself? To judge others by your own standard is the height of folly. Even if you can't comprehend it, he obviously can. That's all there is to it. <laughs> Damn, Makoto really lived a normal life, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Jihiro's secret was that, that, you know, uh, Chihiro was a boy, not a girl. Uh, Coco's was the fact that, uh, she's also Genocide Jack. Uh, I don't know if the others actually really have their secrets revealed. Well, while we're on the subject, why don't I tell you? That embarrassing memory, that secret he didn't want anyone to know. Hey, um... You know what Mondo did? He killed his own brother. Uh, this is a literal normal high school lucky boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. M Makoto is very normal high school lucky boy. Mondo, the ultimate biker gang leader, makes all the hoodlums and riffraff across the country tremble. The only reason he had the chance to join a gang in the first place was because of a certain someone. Mondo's older brother's name was Gaia Owada. Mondo had nothing but respect for him. It was because of Daya that Mondo ever got on a motorcycle. Mondo's brother was his only family. He was the only one Mondo could trust or respect. He wanted to measure up to his big brother, so he imitated him in everything he did. Mondo was the epitome of the starry-eyed kid brother. Meanwhile, the charismatic older brother had put together a local motorcycle gang. Monokuma is a clown, yes. And before anyone knew it, it had grown into the biggest biker gang in the country. Saya, the older brother, number one in the gang, and his number two, his younger brother, Mondo. In the beginning, everything was peaches and gravy. Peaches and gravy? Ew. Ew. But when Mondo started to think about how he would have to take over the gang from his brother someday, his brother's greatness, his reputation, began to gnaw on Mondo's very soul. The kid's gonna take over for Daya, huh? Daya created this gang with his bare hands. Mondo's just along for the ride. Can someone like that really be our leader? All that'll do is make the gang look bad. Almost every day, Mondo heard gossip and whispers of the other members of the gang. Which is why... I... I just... I gotta get stronger. Stronger than Daya. Once. One time. No matter what, I gotta win. I don't care what it takes, I gotta come out on top. And on the night of his amazing brother's retirement ceremony, Mondo challenged him to a street race. But during the race, tragedy struck. The kid brother pushed ahead with reckless abandon, eager for victory, and dashed on into oncoming traffic. But suddenly, Oh, 
playing in his kid brother's arms, the older brother delivered his final words. My bad, kid. Fucked up. Sorry. Of course he knew it was his brother's fault, but Daya never blamed him for what happened. Hey, kid. The rest is up to you. No matter what, you gotta keep the gang together. Because it's the team you and me put together. It's a... a promise between men. Oh. He decided to hide the truth of what happened from everyone else in the gang. In order to keep the gang together and keep the promise to his brother. He could never admit to anyone that it was his own weakness that had caused the accident. And as a result, the team was made even stronger under the banner of the kid who bested his big brother. Daya was going to lose to his kid brother, so he got stupid and got himself killed. That became the explanation for what happened. Hondo's lie began to prove. He wanted to leave the team so bad, he was willing to tell all kinds of lies about his brother. I, I just... Strong. Yeah. Strong, strong, strong. And yet... Hmm. As soon as our killing game began, he realized, no matter how tough he pretended to be, he was just another weak thing that could die in an instant. And then the lovely, the hateful Monokuma announced the revealing of the embarrassing secrets. At that point, it was clear I would have no problem shedding light on his secret. Mondo killed his own older brother. No matter what, I couldn't let the other gang members find out. If that happened, everything would have been ruined. Everything me and my brother had worked to create would have been destroyed. His death, all the guilt I've been carrying around, it all would have been for nothing. So that's why... That's why I... Mondo? After I saw what Monokuma had on me, my head filled with a kind of fuzzy uneasiness and just started swarming around. I'd never felt anything like it before. I didn't know what to do about it. I wasn't sure what to think or say, but after a while, that fuzzy uneasiness turned itself into a rock hard lump of anxiety way down in my stomach. And it was right around then that Chihiro asked me to start working out with him. And right there, I. He told me a secret. Seriously? Jesus! Yeah, I'm sorry I lied to you. But why? Why now? Why are you telling me this all of a sudden? Huh? Because, I mean, you've kept that secret all this time, right? If anyone found out, you would... But... You're right, but... I want to change. I wrap myself in lies. I'm weak. I want to destroy that version of me forever. Sports is like a knife in my gut. Felt like he was exposing the lie I'd been living myself. I have to change. I don't want to be weak anymore. You're so strong. It can't hurt you, right? Whatever secret Monokuma might tell us. You piece of... So what? You're saying I should just say it? You're saying if I really am... I should just be able to tell everyone my secret. They're the same. Oh, I was jealous. I was jealous of Chihiro's strength. He had the strength to face his own weakness to try and overcome it. It's the kind of strength I'd never had. I've never had. So I was jealous of him. And that jealousy broke me. Why? Why? Are you making fun of me? I'm strong. Are you fucking with me right now? No. I I'm not making fun of you. You really are strong, Mondo. 
felt like I could hear something starting to breathe. Something inside my head. What did he want me to do? What was I supposed to do? Was I supposed to just sit back, let my secret get revealed and ruin everything? Why did you have to tell me all that? Are you trying to rub my failure in my face? I, I just wanted to... No, I just really admire you. I admire your strength. Yeah, that's right. That's right, I am strong. Strong, I'm strong. Strong, 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 strong. Stronger than you! you and stronger than I I don't remember anything after that. When I woke up again, he was laying at my feet, covered in blood. I had the dumbbell in my hand and I was just staring at him, down on the ground. Hey! I killed him. Ah. Uh. I killed Chihiro. It, this actually kind of hurts. Like this actually makes me tear up a little bit because I'm sad. Just as weak as I've always been. And thanks to that, I did something I can never take back. Mondo, who is normally so aggressive, so angry. He hid that weak side away from everyone. That was his secret. A weakness like that lived in a heart like his and turned him cold blooded. God damn it! <laughs> Look at him, you see? You're all just like him. For a secret from the past, for a memory. For that, he killed another living human in cold blood. He couldn't cut free of his regrets from the outside world. He doesn't know what true strength is. Do you see hope anywhere in there? Sai, so sure don't. You bastard. Shut up, you son of a bitch. Go ahead, say that again. I dare you. Okay, I'll say it as many times as I want. It's what I want to say, but... Unfortunately, I can't do that right now because that time for punishing is fast approaching. Punishing? You mean execution? That's what I promised you, right? The black and that disturbed the peace will be punished. Ridiculous. Uh, hold on. Now then, I prepared a very special punishment. Fermando Owada, the ultimate biker gang leader. N no, wait, wait. Let's give it everything we've got. It's punishment time. I said. Wait. Sorry, man. I couldn't keep the promise we made from one man to another. Oh no, it's been found guilty. Time for the punishment. Cage of Death. Yeah. There's really not a body this time around, because...
Basically, he's well, damn near liquefied into. Well. Hondo butter. Okay. Love and death in your soul will forever be at peace. It can't be my brother. A murder and another execution. I want to feel again. Everyone's lives are taken so lightly here. I feel like I might be going mad. Maybe I'll just let it happen. As Taco's sad screams invaded our skulls, we were each forced to realize once again that he, of course he had to. What a disappointment. This is the end of the game. Yakuya? You're completely insane, you know that? A game? One of our friends is dead. Do you realize that? Naturally. Of course I do. Because this game is life or death. Hey. I don't have anything to say to you. I don't have a response except that. However. I just don't understand why. Why did you go out of your way to make to disguise Mondo's crying? Why? Sure. Isn't it obvious? Because it made things more interesting. His voice was calm, emotions like the voice of death chilled me to the bones. Last night, when the murder took place, I was in the library as usual. Honestly. So you ignored the nighttime rule, too. Hmm. That rule never mattered to me. I don't recall agreeing to it. There is nothing to be done. Well, I don't particularly care. Please continue. Night grew late, and I decided to return to my room, which is when I stumbled upon him. I spotted Mondo coming out of the girl's locker. After he'd gone, I looked inside and saw the corpse. You actually witnessed the murder? He was such a fool. He didn't have the slightest idea that I'd seen him. So you're saying you knew who the culprit was from the very beginning? Indeed, but if that had been the end of it, how boring would that have been? I mean, what a waste of time to have the answer revealed right at the beginning. Just why I decided to lend a little helping hand. I thought it would liven things up. You did all that to liven things up? So after hearing about Genocide Jack from Toko, you decide to use that to create the fake murder scene. But damn, man. If we hadn't figured out who'd really done it. <coughs> okay, I'm done sneezing. Ugh. Yeah, Biakia, this fucker. Yeah, he... Oh. I want to just beat the absolute shit out of Byakuya. He is... I can't stand him for the shit that he's done. You would have been dead too, right? Well, obviously I would have revealed the truth before it reached that point. Of course... Byakuya turned and looked at me, me in the eye. Feel his sharp eyes piercing into me. Let's just tie him up. Yeah, let's just tie him up and leave him fucking... Just tie him up to his fucking chair and leave him there. Thanks to a certain remarkable someone, it never did. Now I was able to perform an interesting experiment. Interesting. Once I do decide to become blackened, I now know who I'll have to watch out for. So that was your reason. Are you satisfied? Indeed. 
Yes, we're done listening to your story. Moving on. There's something I'd like to ask Monokuma. Oh, I'm up next. You like to perform these elaborate executions each time, correct? My question is, why? Do you like them? But you know, this punishment, this despair, it's not just for you. All this punishment, all this despair is my gift to mankind itself. You're over-exaggerating. I'm not over-exaggerating. These punishments are meant to, to transform all hope to despair. What do you mean? 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 Good grief, I don't understand why you have to pick apart every little stupid thing. Whatever, doesn't matter. You guys are live on stream! <laughs> oh. In the end, I'm going to stand alone as the victor, and then everything will be revealed to me. Ah, the noble son of a noble family. Do you understand me? Pardon me for a moment. Give me a life once. And all, what's wrong? Sorry, my cat's acting up. He's being a bit swirly, so I'm wondering what's wrong with him. <laughs> I think this is the start of a terrifying friendship. <laughs> yeah, Monokuma live streamer confirmed. <laughs> yeah. Shut up. I would never stoop to the level of a childish criminal like you. Let me just say this. After I had achieved complete victory, you're up next. Come here. Come here, boy. Sorry, my cat just decided to be a bit squirrely and I think he's needing attention from me, so... Okay, you can sit in my lap, boy. I'm going to find you and kill you. Understand? In the name of my family. In the name of the Togami family, for which victory is a foregone conclusion. Oh, this so cool. That's like you're the main character of a video game or something. No trash mob for you. I swear, whatever it takes, I will kill you. <laughs> Temper Sounds like someone needs a nap. <laughs> Monokuma's laughter peeled across the courtroom. And the curtain closed on the case of Chihiro Mongo. But I knew that wasn't the end. Guess Togami is dying? Wish. The killing game would still continue. Because the mastermind wouldn't let it end. For those of us who are still alive, our worst fear and despair kept on multiplying. It was the kind of despair that felt like a blind puppy in hell had more of a future than us. All of our courage, our effort, our friendship felt like it amounted to nothing at all. It was the worst kind of despair.
Anyway, like I was saying, this is a pretty good spot. Yeah, a really good spot. This is your actually your first playthrough of this. You haven't watched the anime either. Oh god. Oh, you are going to be in surprise. You're going to be in shock for some of these. Anyway, isn't it amazing how that girl went and killed someone before things even had a chance to get boring? Once things really get moving, it'll be like a roller coaster. There won't be any stopping it. Fear and despair charge forward at a speed nothing can hope to match. But I must admit, I'm disappointed. I went to all the pain and effort of making you part of the group, and you couldn't play your part. You do remember you were supposed to make the first move, right? Huh? Okay, I don't remember this. I don't remember this at all. No biggie. There's nothing we can do about it now. So just do your best to make things more exciting from now on, okay? After all, that's what everyone wants to see. There's one thing I'd like to ask you. As long as you don't want to know my measurements, fire away. Who is it? The 16th high school student, I mean. You could ask anything, but super denied, ultra denied, demonic denied. Because you see, that's my ace in the hole. What the? Okay, I know who the 16th student is, but I don't remember the scene. I don't remember who this is supposed to be. I think I've got an idea as to who this is supposed to be asking Monokuma this, but I can't remember for sure. That's why I'm not giving them any particular voice and I'm just using my voice. Even though I use my voice for basically Nayagi. And nobody be dumb enough to reveal that, right? No matter how close they were to their friends. <laughs> I think I know who it is, but I can't remember for sure. You received the crazy diamond present. Okay. Um. You think you know the ending of the anime? Forgot how you got spoiled. Uh, um. Maisie, ma major fan service here. I'm. I. Mm. I can't take it anymore. Getting out of here anytime soon. It's impossible. I can't let myself think about. How much I want to get out of here. If I keep thinking like that, I might decide to. Donuts. I need to eat some donuts. That'll cheer me up. Uh, okay. Weird. I don't know why we're getting it from her perspective right now, but okay. Glazed donuts, twisty donuts, jelly donuts, cream filled, donut holes, malasadas? Wait, what? What the hell was that last one? I have never heard of that. Ooh, a memento. I won't look that up. There's another fried dough. It's a Portuguese fried dough. I, it, 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 it's, it's 
what I'm getting from, like, Googling it. Huh? Oh, thank you for the follow, VTuber star. And welcome into the garden. <laughs> okay. Oh, God of Donuts, I'm praying for a wonderful encounter. Sorry. Please forgive me for breaking the nighttime rule. Right now, for me, donuts are absolutely necessary. What's that sound? It sounds like it's coming from the bathhouse. I'm super scared, but it is is someone there? A next generation legend, stand tall galactic hero. Daily life. Oh god. So I'm now into morning after the conclusion of the second class trap. Um, I'm just gonna quickly change my uh title. What, the, uh... What, what the fuck, uh, with the whole entire... Oh, fucking hell. I'm sorry, my neighbor above me just, like, startled me because they just, like, dropped something against the floor or, like, something like that. Our... our... What did I did what did I always see? Uh well you'll see here in a moment. Uh I think that we'll see here, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, damn delay. Uh but oh god, my neighbor just startled me because I'm just Oh my Thank you for the raid. Holy crap. I was not expecting another raid tonight. Uh welcome in uh the youtuber star uh welcome into the garden <laughs> thank you uh yeah i'm playing some dungeon rampa i'm on chapter three now i'm on daily life i just finished the trial for uh hi Araco. <laughs> um uh hi and hi oro amaterasu How's my stream going? It's actually going fairly well. Uh, I got the second. Uh, I got the second class trial done. Uh, I'm doing okay. My one arm is a little bit stiff and sore because I just got my first dose uh, today of vaccination. So, yeah. Uh, but. Uh, how was your stream tonight, VTuber Star? I see that you were doing some just chatting, so was that just all you were doing tonight, or were you playing some games before that? Uh, thank you, Araco. Yeah, uh, it's just a little bit stiff and sore right now, so. It's good. Uh, you did Genshin for a bit? Oh, jeez. I've been meaning to get back into Genshin. I've, I've got friends that play it and like I've put it down for so long that I have like missed so many banners. I have no f but, like uh, the last banner I remember was something to do with Venti, I think. Yeah. You have no clue how to play it. Uh, how to play Genshin? Uh, I'm Sure, you'll eventually get the hang of it. I mean, 
it's not too terribly hard. At least not from what I remember. Uh, I, but also it's been a while, so I mean, my memory could be really bad with that. <laughs> Um, here, I'm just gonna swap to my intermission screen just so that way I it's a little bit easier for me to like talk and it's not completely focused on the game right now. Uh, yeah, true, true, you just get confused. Yeah, no, I understand that. Um, I've gotten confused in that game as well because uh, I have forgotten like all of my controls. Uh, yeah, I haven't played Genshin in a long time, so that the controls can sometimes get a little bit confusing unless you really, uh, unless you've got a really good memory for all of that kind of stuff. Like controls in Genshin, I can't remember worth a damn. Controls in Final Fantasy XIV. Oh, yeah, I remember those. <laughs> Hashtag whale, okay. I have no idea what you're on about, Rocco, but okay. But thank you for the little... Oh, that's a cute little thing that you, you sent before. <laughs> um, yeah, um... <laughs> I... I <laughs> Thank you for redeeming the consumed liquids. Uh, I actually have my cup of coffee in hand right now, so I will consume some coffee. Even though a lot of people would look at me weird because it's like midnight and I'm drinking coffee. <laughs> yeah, uh... I would, I, so far, and how have you been in Rocco? I haven't seen you in a little bit. I know that you, it's okay, you drink caffeinated tea and it's 3 a.m. Oh, God. Well, I mean, eh. Each their own, and also I know that at least for some people, I think that actually caffeine can actually, depending on how your brain is wired, it can actually add Instead of it being a stimulant, it actually winds up acting as um, a depressor instead, or not, no, that's not the right word. Um, you've been good, Arafa, that's good to hear. Uh, like, I knew of one person who, uh, with the way that their brain was wired, uh, caffeine, instead of making them more alert, it actually made them more tired. For some strange reason, the, ca the caffeine just made them more tired than alert, so. I've heard of some people, like, drinking a cup of coffee before deciding that bedtime for them. It's been fun, but you gotta head to bed. Good day to y'all. Well, have yourself a good night. Uh, I hope you have some good sleep there, Rocco. And thank you for swinging past. <laughs> And those are such cute emotes. Aww. Caffeine makes you sleepy, Nyan. Oh, and you're allergic to it? Oh. Oh. Yeah, having an allergy to stuff is never fun. Like, no joke, I actually have got a... F so yeah, no alcohol and coffee for you. Ooh. I mean, at least that's two things that are... That can be pretty bad for you, that are... That you can't have, at least. I don't know whether or not that's an, a positive or a negative. <laughs> I mean, I don't really... The only thing I ever drink is um, instant coffee from time to time, but 
even then I've been cutting back on my caffeine intake. Like I used to drink a lot of coffee at one point. Like I used to drink like two two cups a day. I've now cut my coffee back to just one cup uh every other day right now i remember going completely cold turkey at one point it was hell oh god my my, uh, my at that point my then fiance now husband oh <laughs> he lived with me when i went cold turkey on coffee i was an absolute nightmare to deal with because I was dealing with the whole entire caffeine withdrawal headache. Yeah, I was not pleasant to be around. <laughs> uh, I, I'm now gradually weaning myself back from coffee again. Like, I went a whole hog with some coffee, and then now I'm gradually weaning myself back again because the fact that I don't need quite as much coffee or caffeine, really. Ugh. I mean, it's not, it, it's also not exactly all that great for me because I usually load my coffee up with like a bunch of milk and sugar. <laughs> So, it, uh, that's the main reason why I usually have a big-ass cup of water on my desk, too. So, it's to actually keep me properly hydrated. <laughs> and it, making sure that I'm not suffering from, like, a dehydration headache. Because that can happen from time to time. Especially with how hot it was at one point here. I am so glad that it is, like, only in the 20s now, I think. Let's see here. Like, it was all the way up until, like, 45 at one point. But now it's, like, only in the 20s. Yeah. Yeah, like, mid-20s to, like, low 30s now. Which is perfectly fine. Like, that's good summer weather for me. Good summer weather. Anything higher than 35 is hell. Um, but I also don't like freezing temp. I don't like anything below. I don't mind like single digits, but I much prefer like double digits. I prefer like maybe. The sweet spot for temperature for me, I find, is like about 15 to 20 degrees. That's that that's a nice range. Because it's not too hot, but not too cold either. It's just right for me. For me, though. <laughs> but um how about we continue on with the game? I would like to get into some more daily life tonight. Before I eventually end stream, and uh, tomorrow night might not be gaming night. I might, because of the fact that I've managed to now get uh, my husband's Wacom tablet to finally work properly. Like, I had to uninstall and reinstall drivers. I might be doing art tomorrow night instead of uh, another game. But let's continue on with the game that I am playing currently. The morning after the conclusion of the second class trial. Everyone met up in the dining hall just like always. And I expected it to start like any other day. I'm sorry, I'm on here. I'm gonna just bump this up a touch just so that way you guys can actually hear the music. Um. That's what I expected, but 
Today's count kind of sucks, huh? Coco and Biakia still refuse to show up. What app am I using again? I uh, you forgot. Um, for my art, I use um, MetaBang Paint Pro. I think that it actually is in my art command. I think. I think I've got an art command now. Uh, yeah. I haven't seen this Asahina anywhere. She said her stomach was hurting, so she's taking it easy in her room for today. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> that is rather unusual for her. Normally, she is so full of energy. Hi, Kestrel. Thank you for the consumed liquids and the posture check. I will sit up straight. How are you tonight? I have I see that you uh <laughs> it's I take it you've been lurking in the background, which is normal for you. And I appreciate your lurking. Oh god. Okay. I've now finished my cup of coffee, meaning that I'm going to be drinking water for the rest of the night. You've been very physically tired. Understandable. Hopefully I feel better after some good sleep at some point. Once you're, you've been packing for moving and it's a lot. Oh yeah, I can understand that. Moving is never easy. It is a lot of work. A lot of packing things up, making sure that everything that you're, like if you're moving out of like, uh, your parent or your guardian's home, you're downsizing, so you aren't changing cities, but still so much. Ah, okay. And that still can be a little, that can still be a little bit rough, because, I mean, then you're going through everything and you're making decisions on... Okay, what is actually going with you? What is being donated or sold or just being uh, dumped at the dumpster kind of thing for like... And all those kind of decisions. Like, again, that's not easy. Like, my parents definitely had that happen with them. They, they wound up downsizing from uh, a trailer down to a condo. So they wound up making a lot of decisions on... And actually, they got rid of a lot of their furniture and just bought new furniture for their condo instead for when they downsized. So, I mean... Uh, I've known people to do that as well. Like, they'll get rid of all their furniture and they'll just get new furniture from the new place if they can afford it. If they can't afford it, then they've got to do other... Then they've obviously got to take their furniture with them or find other ways. Uh. Whereas in the future here... Uh, me and my husband are definitely not going to be downsizing. We're going to be looking to get a bigger place in the future, actually. Um, here, how about I change back to my intermission screen just to talk more? Uh, just because it makes it a little bit easier. Um, you're just relaxing and having a good time. Well, that's good to hear. Oh, ow. 
Okay. I can definitely feel that in my arm now. <laughs> I just got my first dose today and oh, my arm is a little bit starting to get stiff and sore in that muscle. So, but yeah, and then. I'm glad that you're able to relax and have a good time and yeah I, I that's what I've been doing I I at least have been trying to sh make sure that I'm moving that arm every once in a while just to make sure that I'm not like at least so that way it's not super stiff I can tell that tomorrow morning it's going to be absolutely a nightmare with how long I sleep for. <laughs> Short exercises helped you a ton. Yeah, I definitely will keep that in mind. I've been mostly just rotating the arm, just rotating it where the shoulder is and everything. That massaging the area. Depending, I might use some icy hot treatment, like use a bit of an ice pack and then also then use um, something warm on it to help loosen it back up a bit and make sure that I'm not winding up with it being too stiff. I've had that happen before, where I wound up with a really stiff muscle in my neck and oh god, that was a nightmare. I could barely pick up my daughter when that happened. <laughs> yeah, muscles suck, unfortunately, but it'll eventually get better. It's also the reason why I keep my cup on the left hand side and why I got the shot in my left arm instead of my right. Imagine having, imagine having muscles to suck cringe. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Mm. Okay, I'd like to get a little bit more through chapter three to get through a little bit of chapter three tonight, and then I think I'll call it a, a night here at like in about mm, half an hour, roughly. One more thing. Okay, what is it? Good news about the packing. It's been going very quickly. So you might be able to see your niece. Oh, that is so awesome. Aww. That is awesome that you'll be able to get to see your niece. I know how much you, you know, you said that you miss seeing her. So that is so fantastic that you'll get to see your niece. Aww. I know to me that family is a lot, like means a lot to me. And yeah, that is very exciting. Like. I know that you said that you really do miss seeing your niece, and that's exciting that you'll get to see her again. Get to see her and get to make some even more great memories with her. <laughs> and... How's it going in Danganronpa? Going good. I, I'm on chapter three now. I feel so sad because... Ah, tiny little Chihiro was gone. Chihiro is no longer in the game. Neither is Mondo. And I want to strangle Byakuya. Oh, I want to strangle Byakuya so badly. So badly. 
That is rather unusual for her. Why she is so full of energy. Which is exactly what makes me worry. So then. So it's just the seven of us then. Looks that way. Sounds like the it's times like this where the committee chairman needs to get things going with a bang. Uh oh. <laughs> Your Chaka. I just wanna take him and hug him and go, oh you poor boy. I know. I know. You you, you just lost like a a guy that you really called your bro and everything, like and you just uh impossible or not taka hasn't said a word since everything that happened yesterday oh he looks so vacant he looks just like uh one look at his face showed he hadn't slept a wink last night must be because of mondo The two of them became so close, and then he finds out Mondo killed Tahira. And then having to watch Mondo get punished, and nothing he could do about it. I can't even imagine what it must have done to him. Like, that's got to kind of break it to some extent. So, I mean, what's going to happen now? We haven't found any way out, and we have no idea what help's ever gonna come. Uh, no, I'm all depressed just thinking about it. I feel like I don't want to play this game solely because I get attached to characters. It reminds me of Saw, and I have a harsh distaste for Saw. Yeah, um, yeah. This game, this game actually really, really can fuck with you because you can get attached to these characters, and then only to like. Lose some of them in the most worst way as possible. Like, this chapter is not going to be the bad one. The next one's going to be the really bad one. The next one, I will warn now for anybody that is following me, anybody that is wanting to see more of this game, I'm telling you right now, chapter four, major spoiler. Um, and major trigger is that there is a suicide in chapter four. <laughs> so please be careful when you when I eventually get there. Currently, I'm on chapter three, but uh, chapter four won't be too far behind. I'll probably get to it by maybe maybe next week. Depending on how fast I get through the daily life and the deadly life portion. Maybe next week, maybe the week after. Because I've been getting through this game fairly fast. Like, I go back-to-back -back nights, so. Now I'm all depressed just thinking about it. And yeah, I, I also don't particularly watch Saw. Just because I don't like gore-fest movies. I don't like movies that have got a lot of gore in them. Um, that's the reason I don't really like Saw. You haven't watched any of them yet? Neither have I, actually. Um, the only movie that I've ever watched that had kind of, that was gory was um, one of my, uh, best friends back in high school. Horror is fine if it's animalistic, but if it's torturous, that's a no-go for you. Yeah. Um, back in high school, I, uh, went over to one of my best friends' place, and we watched this, well, we watched a, a horror movie, I guess is what they would classify it as. Um, and the main reason why, for the longest time, I actually could not, um... I hated logging trucks and that. 
I hated some other things uh, because the fact that, uh, well, my friend decided that, you know, hey, we're going to sit here and we're going to watch Final Destination. Yeah, I did not like that one bit. I don't like that movie one bit. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. We simply have to make the best of things, do our best to get along, and live here together in peace. That's another one you don't want to see? Yeah. No, it, Final Destination is a... Oh, God, I hate it. I hate that movie. I hate that set of movies. Ugh. Mm. Forget about the outside world and accept this new life. That is the only hope we have now. What? To live here forever? I'm trying to remember what the motive for this... for this chapter is when it gets to that point. Well, Here we have every convenience. We have food, clothes, our every need is seen to. Why are you dissatisfied? In fact, let me ask you this. What is it about the outside world that you long for? Competition, discrimination, victimization, and violence. The society grows, so does its perversion. In which case, is our current situation not... Being an angel, pretty pudgy princess. Huh? Hmm? Here we go. Becky, the drill shop owner, the bunny-eared Amazon cat girl, dog boy, robo justice, the galactic king. Okay, Hafumi, what the fuck are you all about? And, and... What I mean is, there's no 2D here. There's no. nothing to be done. The mastermind puts such base desire to their advantage, bending you to their will. You know? Okay, well, anyway, since Taka's, like, catatonic... Hmm. As the oldest one here, I'm officially stepping up to take the lead. So, we're all gonna work together and spend the rest of the day searching the school. Searching? Well, I mean, since the class trial is over and all, Perhaps. there should be new places for us to investigate. Hmm. Yeah, that's the ticket. Maybe we'll find some kind of clue this time. Well, then. then once we're done eating, let's split up and begin looking around. You have any problem with that, Celeste? <laughs> <laughs> there may well be a discovery waiting for us, which may further enrich our life here. No, the point is to look for clues. And just as we were starting to come together, she barged in and ruined the conversation. Genocide. What? Nobody called for you. Um, what the? How come it's genocide, Joe, and not Coco? God, this place is just amazing! Finally a place I can just be my murderous self. Oh god. Yeah, um this was also another reveal from chapter two. Uh Genocide Jack is real actually Genocide Jill, who is also Toko. Uh dissociated dead which is a really, really bad version of dissociative identity disorder split personality basically is what they've called it and oh god i hate this representation but ugh. which is why i've decided to stop holding back and spread my wings no more hiding in a cave for me uh -huh. unless i have another battle to fight the whole killer with the split personality thing is so overdone I gotta destroy that stereotype. No I'll fight all day and all night to murder those totally slanderous cliches. Uh, yeah, this is uh, the serial killer. But you are a killer with a split personality. <laughs> if she weren't here, my chances of survival would go up at least 10%. 
Come on, you gotta back me up here. Even the biggest stars need the little people to hold them up. <laughs> yeah, she's kind of nuts though. Genocide Jill is kind of nuts though, but I still like her to some degree. Well, whatever else we do today, first we might we should eat. We can't do anything on an empty stomach. You're right. Let's hurry up and eat so we can start our investigation. <laughs> well, we were forced to eat breakfast with a murderer. And after a much needed but very annoying meal, we set to work looking around the school. Okay. Um, first floor, second floor. Hmm. Um, actually, I'm going to use the... I'm just going to use that to get up. And, um, okay. Well, the third floor of Hope's Peak Academy, I wonder what we're going to find this time. What's up here? So there's some classrooms back this way. Getting tired of this. Yeah. Yep, more metal plates, more cameras. Yay, another coin! Uh, I'm gonna try and find as many of those coins as possible. Uh, the clock, monitor, nothing else in this room. Uh, the other classroom here, Despair Squadron, Monokuma. Huh. So in the end. Windows appear also barred with metal plates, not surprising I suppose. So escape still looks impossible, but I better check all the other metal plates again just to be sure. Hmm, yeah. Walked off with pieces of metal. Another camera. Clock and the monitor. Okay, um, let's see the area. Okay, that goes back down to the second floor. Uh, rec room. Okay. Hmm. So this is... A recreation room. A place for students to come and relax. Never would have imagined a school having a place like this. Well, no normal school would. It has Othello, Shoji, even a dartboard and pool table. Look at this. They've even provided us with a remarkable number of magazines. Isn't it wonderful? Those will certainly be helpful in keeping our boredom at bay. Hello there! Allow me to expound. We've got fashion, motorcycles, martial arts, video games, baseball, science, all kinds of magazines. Oh, but nothing dirty. This is a school after all. Need a quick fix. Check out the swimsuit mags. So then. And will you be adding to our collection as new issues come out? Too bad. Sorry, no can do. Even if I wanted to, right? Magazines are kinda... Kind of what? Oops! 
Nothing. Never mind. No, no, no. Anyway, that's it for my expansion. Bye bye. But he just said. I know, right? It bothers me too. Life here would be as much would be that much nicer if you could add some new issues once in a while. So disappointing. Really? Holy crap, there is quite a bit of it. Okay. Monitor camera. Cool table isn't normal school equipment. Is this thanks to Monokuma or did the school buy it? There's a table here. It's kind of similar to desks in the classroom, but also kind of not. Uh, but there's a copy of the fellow here. I'm pretty bad at it, though. Is it even a dartboard? Did Monokuma put this here, or was it always part of the school? Uh, chair. Bourbon looking leather couch. It looks pretty comfortable. It's like some kind of bottle, but what the heck is it? Maybe it's just for decoration or something? And locker. Beat up old locker. It doesn't seem especially important right now, so I don't need to open it. Okay, and then there are all different kinds of magazines on here. Bunch of monthly comics, but without getting regular updates. Point. Okay, is there anything else that I'm missing here? Doesn't look like it. Yeah, no. Okay. Hi, Kyoko. It would seem... So the third floor opened up this time. After a brief investigation, it looks like there's a physics lab and an art room. I also found a huge machine of some kind in the physics lab. I wonder what it does. Uh. Ugh. Okay, so this leads to the art room. At first glance, this looks like any normal art room. Something about it seems off, or multiple somethings. Well, well, look at all this equipment. Certainly scratches that artist itch of mine. Great supplies, of course, but they've also collected all kinds of sculpting tools. So, Hifumi, do you like sculptures and figurines and stuff? Yes, indeed. Well, normally I limit myself to 2D, but figurines are, like, borderline 2D, so it's okay. I don't know what, how that's borderline, but okay. <laughs> I'm a fan of... Uh, Charamba, pumpkin head. I especially admire anything that Saburo Rompong makes. Caraban has a build to express the movement of muscles as exquisite as seen in his Mana Cat series. Pumpkin head is a little, it's like a little sculptor fairy, representing the century's greatest quality. Saburo Hongi, meanwhile, is known for his Mecha Musume series, which led to a worldwide tour. <laughs> Early, they can only be regarded as the Elite Four. But one of your elite is missing. Well, the Elite Three just sounds stupid, man, doesn't it? Yes, indeed. Besides, that empty seat rightly belongs to me. <laughs> it begins. They begin my reign as the legendary ruler of the next century. I see. Well, good luck with that. Okay, there's going to be quite a bit in this room. So... 
another camera. I want a Puma statue. Who would ever want to make something like that? It's still, the quality is surprising. Yeah. Uh, oh, that just leads into the other room. This is the repository that's attached to the art room. It's used to store different artsy things. Oh, God. There's something on the floor. It looks like a picture, but as I stretched out my hand to pick it up, almost at the... On its own, my hand froze. Huh? I saw in that picture was Chihiro, Leon, and Mondo. And they were smiling. What was this? Questions are racing through my head, one after the other. Why is it only these three people? What are they doing together? How come they're smiling like that? Who was it taken? Who took it? Where's the camera they used? How'd they get it developed? In the picture, the window in the classroom. There's no metal plate covering. Which must mean, wherever this picture was taken, wasn't here at Hope's Peak? There was no time to find an answer. All the questions floating around my head were quickly drowned out by... That's mine! Give it back! Monokuma appeared out of nowhere and snatched the photo and any chance I had at answers evaporated. You picked, didn't you? Well, they all had some pretty dazzling smiles, huh? Isn't that they were definitely living their school life. It's like they ripped a page out of the book of you. What's going on with that? What's going on with that picture? You know... <laughs> I'm not telling nothing. Why can't you give me a straight answer? Never mind. I don't even know why I bothered asking. So, as you can tell with that picture, um, there is some, uh, things going on with the school. Okay. Okay, um, surveillance camera, mallets, there are wooden mallets hanging on the wall. If I had to guess, I'd say they use them for making sculptures. Another monitor. How much am I worrying about it? Yeah. A dolly. They must use it to move all these statues around. Okay. Uh, there's nothing else in this room. Let's start with the monitor. Even here in the art room, there's a monitor. Okay, I'll consume liquids like, again. Aha! I'm gone. As long as I don't try and chip my two teeth with my goddamn fucking straw. <laughs> yeah. There are paintings lining the walls. Is this really art? It just looks like a bunch of crappy graffiti to me. It's a Venus statue. Yep, definitely very art roomish. No judge, please. Yeah. It's a locker, but it doesn't seem like there's anything inside. This is a statue of Neo. I've never really heard of anyone using a Neo statue for life drawing classes or whatever. Okay, I think that's everything. I've already talked to Hufumi. Yeah. There's nothing else here. Um. Another set of stairs that go up one more floor. Um. 
Down here is the physics lab. This is the physics lab. It feels like a classroom, more like some kind of research institute. What do you mean? A camera. Oh, this is... It's a digital camera. It's got some kind of weird anime style design on it. It's kind of beat up, but it looks like it still turns on just fine. Yep, it still works. I should show the others later. Okay. Let's look around the room real quick. What's up with these? this ridiculously big machine? What can? What? What? Do you want to do some quantum leafing? Huh? That's the time machine. Pretty awesome, right? It was designed by a student right here in your speed. The ultimate physicist. Although they don't go here anymore. They died during the tragedy. Yeah. A time machine? Seriously? So it can go back in time? Okay, then let me get in there. If I can go back to the past, then I can... This time I'll stop Mondo for sure. Oh, sorry, not possible. This particular time machine can only go back one minute. Comes in handy when you, like, leave your pizza bagels in the oven one minute too long. One minute? Mm hmm? You sound disappointed. But actually, I was lying about the whole thing anyway. There are no such thing as time machines. What? Honestly, it's just an air purifier. Air purifier? It can produce clean air no matter where you're at. With that thing, you can even live on Mars. With that, but with what? With the discombobulating gravity and deadly, oh, low, deadly low temperatures, you probably don't want to live on Mars. You guys? Anyway, this machine is the reason you guys have all this delicious air. So don't go messing with it. You break it, and it's your butt. This huge thing is just an air purifier. And more than that... Go out of your way to say something you know will hurt someone who's already suffered. God damn you. <laughs> Another camera... You, they must use these for physics experiments and stuff. There's materials, pulleys, steel plates, magnets, and all kinds of stuff I don't even recognize. There's a monitor here. This machine obviously has some kind of purpose, but I don't know anything about physics to begin with, so I wouldn't have a clue where to start with this. Uh, okay, other than that, okay. Um, I'll talk to Kiyotaka real quick. Hey, Taka, don't you think this place is like some kind of research institute? Still no reaction. Um, This is the equipment room. It's super disorganized, and there's a strange chemical smell in the air. Oh, this place is so relaxing. So coming. The smell behind is almost unbearable. I'm getting seriously excited! It's so tempting! I just want to dunk myself right in it. Of course, Genocide Jack likes it. That just goes to show how disgusting it really is. Hmm. I discovered lots of stuff, and it was all strange, but I don't know if any of it was an actual clue. This game more confused. Maybe I should head to the dining hall and talk about it with everyone else. For now, I should head to the dining hall. Okay. I got back to the dining hall. First thing I noticed was... Tina. I tried to talk to her, but my voice was immediately drowned out by the others as they rushed into the dining hall. Huh? Hmm? 
I bet you a sucker is on them. Everyone rushed past me and crowded around Hina. Being surrounded by everyone like that, Hina looked really uncomfortable. Are you feeling better already? <laughs> yeah, I ate a few donuts and that really helped a lot. You love those donuts. Mm. But what's in your stomach that was hurting? Well, my stomach ache kind of made me hungry, so, you know. <laughs> I guess my memory's kind of fuzzy lately. Mm. They say that a goldfish will eat however much food you give it, even if it's about to burst. Miss mm. Sasahina is pretty much the same, it looks like. Just a second. Hey, you of all people don't have any room to talk. Anyway, I was worried about you. Hmm. Besides that, you... Huh? huh? Jeez, your knackers are huge. What the heck? Did you convince them to double up on milk production? Bastard. Stay away from her, fiend. Yeah, uh, 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 Jill, really? Uh, um... Anyway, first things first. Talk about what we found, right, Taka? Right. Jill became a massive clown. Yeah. Okay. Um. Since it is 1 a.m. Um. I'm actually going to save my game here. Oh yeah, it did save. Um. Just because it is starting to get late. So I am going to be ending here. Uh, as much as I love to continue, it is getting late. So, um, give me a moment here. I am actually starting to get very, very tired. So I am actually going to, uh, Yeah, no problem. Uh, I wish everybody a good night. Um, tomorrow's stream might be art. It might be game. I'm a little bit up in the air on what I'm going to do tomorrow night. But uh, thank you, everybody, for the follows, for the raids tonight. Uh, and thank you for all my lurkers that were just sitting there enjoying the content that I'm putting that I was putting out tonight. Um, I'm glad to have gotten through uh, the second class trial and now I'm working on chapter three. Uh, yeah, but anyways, uh, thank you. Uh, have a good night, all of you. I will be back tomorrow night. Good night. <laughs>